Yes, thank you all for joining. Um, my name is uh, Ranjan Priyadarshi, and I'm a product manager for Database in Memory. Uh, we are ex very excited that you are here uh, to learn about Database in Memory and all the progress that we are making. And uh, so I will shortly share the agenda with you. Uh, but before that, um, let's talk about the... Uh, so the last two days have been very exciting. Um, we had great turnouts, lots of interaction, questions, and discussion. So please keep that going. Um, uh, uh, please ask questions. We do love questions, so please do ask questions. Um, throw us any comments or anything. We, uh, yeah, uh, uh, anything and everything is very helpful to us. So yeah, feel free. Um, also, uh, uh, please uh, send us any feedback on the summit. Um, so that uh, in future, when we organize a uh, summit, uh, it will help us improve and all. So kind of switch uh, gears here and kind of uh, do a little bit of intro, intro about the database in memory. Uh, so question is, why do we need database in memory, right? So uh, if many of these customers and organizations, they are kind of struggling with many of these uh, performance related issues with uh, the uh, kind of reports and analytics and all. And also they are running many of these uh, dashboards and business KPIs and, uh, and, uh, and, and they are not able to meet those SLAs or they are copying the data to another system to get the performance and all. And that adds to cost and complexity. Um, also uh, there is a lot of impact or business impact or cost impact, value impact of delayed analytics, and we'll talk about it shortly as well. And as the business scales, then uh, uh, then uh, again, the, the performance issues impact um, the company performance and also. Um, overall, and also if there are a lot of ad hoc queries running, that also um, needs uh, special care uh, when you're running those ad hoc queries and reports. So, So if you are one of those person on the left-hand side who is screaming about getting uh, the reports on time, or if you have business users screaming about that, um, I think you definitely need database in memory. So here is a typical customer scenario, and this is actually taken from a, 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 a real customer use case. Um, so um, at that site, there were um, business reports and filters keeps on changing. And this is typical of any business, right? And, uh, and you can create indexes, but uh, shortly uh, once the data changes, uh, those uh, indexes don't hold good, okay? So now those uh, reports again run slower. So what do you do? And uh, what happens is that because those, those reports run slower, the whole of um, the organization gets busy to solve that problem, right? From the business analyst to developer to DBA to storage networking guys, the whole organization is trying to fix that problem. And this cycle repeats around every uh, critical milestone, whether it's a month end or it's a um, quarter end or year end, um, the same problem comes back. I'm sure it resonates with many of you. So that's the basic VCS cycle here. So there is a big impact of delayed analytics, okay? Uh, it leads to poor services. If you are offering any service to your customer or customer dis dissatisfaction, uh, for your services, slow to react to market needs, right? And uh, slower to competition, slower in innovation and so forth. So um, definitely, and it also raises the cost of services. Um, here is another typical uh, customer scenario. Uh, somebody built a kind of a, a report and those reports uh, constantly miss those performance SLAs. Um, and uh, again, this could be because of many reasons, because data is loading, indexes are there, other things happening on the system, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and again, the organization is suffering, okay? And again, because of delayed analytics, there is a huge cost to the organization. So these are some of the typical tactical issues that are happening, and uh, all those companies or organization, they need database in memory. Now talk about something from higher level, okay? And this is kind of a uh, general theme that's happening in the market, which is about digital transformation, okay? And uh, any, uh, many of these organizations are going through this digital transformation, and it's happening across the industry, whether it's uh, insurance, retail, 
uh, manufacturing, fintech, telecom, everybody is going through that transformation. And they, uh, they need that real time performance and they need those uh, analytics and workloads to run faster. i uh, give an example, retailer, right? They're doing some location-based analytics to send personalized mo mobile coupons or manufacturing, they're doing some monitoring them quality and other things or fintech who are doing that risk fraud analysis and all. So basically these are some examples of um, a, a kind of a digital transformation that's happening. And this is where the need for database in memory is. So what are customers using database in memory for? Okay. And uh, these are actually the real use cases uh, or the areas where um, I captured it, uh, studying many of these customer stories and all. And again, this uh, usage is across industry, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, database in memory is uh, helpful. Uh, it's uh, industry agnostic. And um, uh, so whether it's the retail uh, or inventory management or running CRM, uh, insurance, uh, financial systems, doing uh, monthly, quarterly, or annual financial reports, airline, ba banking, manufacturing, pharmaceutical, oil exploration, everywhere. So it's across industries, it's very helpful. Um, and also wherever it's a customer facing application, customer facing time sensitive application, right? Uh, providing services, running operation, maintenance services, um, uh, business dashboards um, and so forth, right? So wherever it's a time sensitive aspect, uh, database in memory gonna be useful. Uh, scale and modernization. So as you scale your business from 10 users to 100 users to uh, 10,000 users, you will need uh, advanced technology that can scale uh, to meet your business needs and all. Um, and also accelerating all these business decisions. So whenever you want to scale your business, you're going to need some powerful technology to back you up. So here are some key benefits of database in memory. Okay. Uh, like I said, benefit is industry agnostic. Um, helps any time sensitive customer facing real time analytic um, applications. So um, uh, basically benefits are faster data warehouse, faster critical reports, faster ad hoc analysis, faster Oracle apps and business apps and BI tool queries and so forth. And then faster decision based on all data, internal and external data. And then uh, there is also uh, kind of a lot of reduction, okay, which uh, reduces the overhead when you're running uh, these sort of workloads on your system. So lowering the data footprint, lowering the total cost of ownership uh, and minimizing the data duplication, um, thereby reducing the cost and complexity. So these are some of the technical benefits that you will see. Now, some of these business benefits, right? So now that you got all these things, uh, so what are the business benefits? Uh, so uh, again, faster time to value, right? If you want to launch any application to market quickly, um, uh, and also simplicity, self-service, more value from data and, and so forth. Uh, there's one on the bottom which says more value from existing investments. And this is where if you have Exadata uh, system um, and if you want to get more value of, out of Exadata, uh, enabling database in memory gonna help. And so what performance uh, uh, has a customer benefits have customers seen, okay? And this is these are all publicly available reports. Uh, let us know if you want to access any of these stories and reports. Uh, many of these customers have seen up to 100x uh, performance benefits uh, for certain workload queries or subset of queries and so forth, right? So a lot of customers have seen uh, big benefits. And even if I even if I go to the bottom most row, right? Even for Lion, My Toys, IMED, getting 4x and 3x is a very substantial benefit. And again, we would like to see your names and success stories here on the next summit. So let us work together together and collaborate. And uh, and 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 we'll we'll, uh, we'll try to see how your business can get benefit out of database in memory. Uh, so uh, I talked a lot about, hey, uh, database in memory is good, but here is also an acknowledgement from uh, the analytics, uh, sorry, uh, from uh, from Forrester and uh, who also rank us very high. And you can see that this report is a little bit older, but they stopped publishing this report. And the analyst uh, here, Forrester, uh, did rate us the best, okay? And this is because of the innovative technology that we provide. And, uh, and just to kind of, again, uh, talk about, hey, this, this, we are not starting the journey. 
there are a lot of customers who are already using database in memory. So uh, if you want to use uh, database in memory, use it with confidence, okay? And, and these are the biggest and the best in the industry who are using database in memory. They want to maintain the lead in the market. They want to be cutting edge. They want to improve the customer experience and service experience, right? So whether it's the largest electronic manufacturer, the largest automaker, the largest retailer, the largest bank in Europe uh, and so forth, right? So the list goes on and these are the largest and the biggest and they want to maintain the lead. So as you are working on digitalization and modernization, the fast and real-time analytics uh, will be the necessity and uh, key enabler. And, uh, and it's almost high time that we, uh, uh, as, as a business, you should start thinking about how to implement real-time analytics in your business. So that was all kind of the background on the uh, why we need a database in memory and uh, where exactly the customers are using it and what use cases and so forth. Right? So switch gear here. Uh, we are in the, uh, the last leg of our summit. This is the fourth session. So today we're gonna hear a keynote from Ahmad and uh, then also we have a presentation from Hisense. And, uh, and we have all the other presentation recorded, so we will share them appropriately. Um, again, this is the fourth session uh, down here. So, and, uh, and after that, we're gonna be ending the summit. So some housekeeping out items before we start. Please do ask question in Q&A and not in the chat window. There are several panelists and experts available to answer your questions. We do love questions, we do love comments, anything, any feedback you can provide, please do provide them um, in the, in the Q&A or in the chat window. Uh, please do subscribe to the LinkedIn channel. I'll paste the link um, in the chat window shortly. Uh, the sessions are being recorded and, uh, and we will, like I said, we will share them uh, appropriately, okay? And you can talk uh, about the summit on the social media using the hashtag DB in memory. Uh, with that, let me stop the share and invite the uh, first speaker to the stage, uh, which is uh, Ahmad. And uh, so Ahmad, uh, you can try start setting up. So Ahmad Alomari is uh, an entrepreneur, author, and Oracle ace, well known in the industry for his system expertise. And, uh, Second, yeah, last my slide. So yeah, well known in the industry for his system expertise, Ahmad Almari has provided professional advice to Fortune 500 companies as well as small and medium sized business in a global capacity. The title of his presentation is Utilizing Oracle in Memory to Improve Application Performance. And in this session, uh, he will present an overview of Oracle in Memory uh, feature as well as example use case to improve application performance. Ahmad, I, I think you lost the share. So um, as data sets continue to include, increase significantly, the need for, keep losing my slide as well as somebody shared. So as data sets continue to increase significantly, the need for in-memory processing is essential in order to scale and ensure optimal application performance and provide near real-time data insights. Ahmad, the stage is all yours. Yeah, thank you, Ron. Okay. Okay, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Ahmed Elamari. I'm going to talk about utilizing or Oracle in memory in order to improve application performance. Uh, so the agenda for today's session is uh, I'm going to cover essentially some background on what is in memory and sort of the expectations of uh, uh, the performance expectations in terms of implementing in memory, and then the business case of why use in memory. Uh, and then I'll go through some specific application use cases uh, within the e-business suite. So <clears throat> in terms of, you know, what is in memory, the, the idea obviously is to essentially store the data, uh, the application data uh, that the application requires and the users are, you know, referencing uh, in main memory or system memory uh, of some form. So the idea there obviously is that the latency of those operations will re be reduced significantly by avoiding obviously physical IO, having to do you know, SQL processing, for example, or even having to you know, load and transform uh, the data. Um, and the idea is that by using you know, the compute layer to you know, divide and conquer, 
so some of the, for example, alternative technologies that are, in my opinion, you know, less superior, um, they use, you know, a lot of compute nodes essentially in order to deliver this kind of in-memory uh, performance uh, for, you know, ad hoc uh, queries, for example, uh, unlike the Oracle database and memory option where, you know, it's powered essentially by a single session um, and using the, you know, in-memory co column store. So the idea is that you want to optimize the data that's being accessed. So in, within the package applications, typically we have you know, two classes of data. One is the transactional data uh, that, for example, will power dashboards, uh, such as if you're looking you know, at the you know, warehouse dashboards, what, how many orders are being shipped, how many are stuck, for example, uh, how many are pending uh, on the dock, for example, or if you're doing some financial reporting, uh, for example, in terms of revenue, aging, uh, things like that, you know, how much uh, revenue is pending collections, uh, roll-ups in the period, you know, things like that. And then we have, of course, the reference data, uh, such as, for example, item master, the customer data, um, in terms of maybe the party definition, the relationships uh, of those parties, organizations, uh, and the various lookups uh, and profiles uh, that the application uses. Um, and again, with in-memory processing, the, the expectation is that it really should deliver orders of magnitude performance improvement. It's not about you know just some uh, small or immaterial performance improvement of you know five percent or ten percent or fifteen percent. Uh, expectation is when this is implemented uh, that you will see you know five x or ten x or twenty x improvement um, because that's really what's required uh, in order to uh, deliver the type of performance that's needed because of the data growth and the sheer amount of data uh, that the you know, business users are, are having to process and scan through. So as a simple example, uh, within the application, obviously prior to the introduction of Oracle database and memory, a lot of applications uh, had to go to kind of extreme lengths of doing their own form of caching uh, in order to, you know, improve uh, performance and support, you know, volume and large scales of, of processing. Uh, so in this example, uh, when the tax engine is called, every time a, a tax line is processed, uh, it has to fetch you know, some setup information, uh, which is stored in the AR system parameters all. That's the setup table that stores it. So typically it'll be looked up you know, by ledger uh, or by the operating unit that's you know, being processed. So in this uh, example, when the tax engine makes a SQL lookup, you know, it'll take about 33 seconds for half a million lookups compared to, for example, if that, mem if that data is uh, cached in memory using an API getter, in this case, just a PL SQL collection uh, and in, in memory table there it reduces to you know, 40 milliseconds, so over 800x uh, improvement. That's the type of improvement that you would typically expect when taking something from you know, just raw SQL processing uh, in storing and then versus storing it in memory. So <clears throat> the database in memory uh, option is essentially uh, introduces this new area called in-memory column store, uh, which is configured by the in-memory size parameter. So it's part of the SGA. And the data is stored in a you know compressed columnar format in order to make uh, processing and you know scanning of large number of rows uh, very efficiently, uh, as compared to the normal you know block format, which which is stored in the buffer cache. So the one of the you know beauties of this feature is that because it's integrated in the inside the database, as a developer, for example, if you're developing applications or even of course as an end user, you don't necessarily need to worry about uh, having to, for example, write you know separate code or use a separate sort of uh, separate set of interfaces to search, uh, for example. So a lot of search engines, for example, you know such as like you know Solar or Covio or other search engines, in order to provide those type of uh, very efficient you know the theme type searches, they typically would spend a lot of effort in extracting the data and putting some kind of search engine in front of it, uh, for example, just in order to be able to facilitate you know quick searches. The beauty about in-memory is that it's all, because it's integrated with the database, it's a native feature. Uh, the, the same interface that you use to write SQLs to access the data from your normal you know, forms or OA framework screens or you know, concurrent reports, those would benefit from the in-memory optimization. So it's you know, transparent without you having to separately write you know, application code to say, okay, uh, if the data is in memory, read it from here. If the data is in the buffer cache, read it from here. That's all handled you know, by the database, uh, which is really one of the key uh, offerings uh, of this feature uh, in terms of its transparency and allows packaged apps uh, to be able to, you know, reference it. So traditionally, of course, the data, for example, you know, the orders or the journals 
Uh, those would typically be stored in the buffer cache, you know, in block format. And then inside those blocks, there would be, you know, rows uh, or tuples. Uh, and now with the in-memory store, there will be this columnar format, which will be stored. And the database, of course, uh, takes uh, care of essentially when, you know, updates are happening, it updates both, of course, the buffer cache as well as the, you know, in-memory store. Uh, and also can, for example, now with a new feature, can automatically move the objects, you know, uh, hot objects from, buffer cache into the in-memory store automatically. So I think that's one of the key features of this, key benefits of this feature is that, you know, packaged apps can essentially leverage it by just you know, using the same set of, you know, SQL interfaces and UIs and searches that they have without having to really, you know, go to great lengths to uh, transform the data or extract the data or set up some type of, you know, in-memory store uh, as other uh, implementations require. So why, why in-memory? So in the in the packaged apps, uh, definitely, and this is true of whether you're running a you know third-party software uh, custom application that's developed in-house, uh, or whether you're running you know SaaS uh, offering, or whether it's a packaged app, even on-prem, the the data that enterprises are having to deal with is just you know phenomenal in terms of its growth, uh, and it just keeps growing, um, and the it's it's not only just the transactional data, but also all the you know unstructured data that's being added you know to the system. Um, and the performance requirements are obviously not changing. In fact, they're, they're going the other way in that the users, you know, uh, continuously demand better performance um, and can't really, you know, wait for minutes uh, for screens to render data uh, or for, you know, programs to render analysis or things like that. So the, the fast performance that's required by users uh, on conventional data sets uh, is still uh, applicable and, and becoming even more aggressive. And businesses throughputs themselves depend on the query performance. Uh, we've all seen cases where, for example, if some if there's some bottleneck in the system, um, or for example, you know, all of a sudden booking orders become slower than it was, or shipping orders become slower, that has an immediate effect uh, on the business throughput. So being able to make sure that those uh, SQL statements and uh, queries are efficient and performing, you know, above the SLAs in order to make sure that there's not a business backlog or you know delay in uh, delivery. And the other key thing is that, um, especially, and this is true of the you know, ERP or, or CRM suite of applications, uh, is that before the, the focus really was really to store the transactional data and, and essentially be able to report on it. Uh, and any you know, complex analysis or data insight was typically done offline. Either some type of data lake was created uh, or some type of reporting solution you know, was created and they usually would extract the data and then run you know, a lot of complex uh, roll-ups, for example, or, or complex financial reports uh, to look at you know, historical data. Um, and so now with this feature, that makes it uh, feasible to be able to do that you know, inline uh, without having to really go to extreme lengths of having to extract the data and you know, build summary tables and summary roll-ups just for the purposes of you know, delivering good performance. Because prior to this, uh, of course, if you try, if you have you know, some of the customers have tens of billions of records in their journal tables, and obviously writing, you know, conventional SQL against that is, is going to take time, no matter what kind of tuning you do uh, versus, you know, via indexing or uh, any, any scheme that you would use, it's still going to take time to go through those billions of records regardless. Um, and so with in memory, being able to scan through that volume of data and return, you know, res meaningful results with data insight in seconds makes that a very uh, attractive uh, option. Um, and more importantly, it makes it feasible to be able to do that kind of data analysis uh, in line. Um, and also, of course, uh, you know, today with uh, artificial intelligence on the machine learning uh, models that people need to build on the data sets, you know, whether it's uh, regression models or, you know, forecast models, for example, uh, those are all key uh, to be able to deliver performance uh, in, order, in, in order to see what type of uh, insights the, the data provides on those models. Uh, and in addition to the you know, transactional and unstructured data, of course, there's also the need to ingest a lot of data in terms of streams, uh, whether it's coming from you know, meter data uh, or uh, any feeds, for example, those would just generate a tremendous amount of data, which all again needs to be stored uh, and needs to be uh, accessed and analyzed. So according to the IDC report, um, and we, we generally see this type of uh, pattern uh, in 
implementations as well is that the unstructured data is definitely going to overtake uh, what we typically see this structured or conventional data. Um, and if you look at, for example, even an e-business suite database, you know, the amount of transaction uh, volume data, for example, the size of the, the raw transactions uh, tends to be uh, a trivial size in comparison to all the you know, surrounding data in terms of like document attachments, uh, for example, uh, all the individual uh, you know, analysis records, uh, for example, and things like that. So uh, that, that trend you know, is going to continue and that'll definitely require an in-memory solution in order to be able to analyze that data and deliver the type of performance that you know, application users uh, require. Um, and of course, as I mentioned before, with the you know, IoT devices, that's introducing you know, large streams of, of continuous data um, and the ability to, again, to search that data, analyze it, and provide data insight. It's really not a nice to have before. So before, you know, in the old days, um, having good application performance for these analytical type queries was a nice to have. And you know, a lot of customers would go to great lengths to, again, build out data lakes and complex reporting solutions or summary tables or materialized views or, or whatever the you know, implementation scheme happened to be uh, in order to be able to run these types of queries. Now with in-memory option, uh, that, that is uh, not only feasible, uh, but the performance uh, of it is, uh, is amazing and it avoids having to introduce all that you know, unnecessary uh, complexity as well. So again, sourcing the IDC the data study, you can see that the you know, data growth is just phenomenal over the years. Uh, and it's you know, growing year after year after year. Um, and of course, uh, this is in zettabytes, which is a, you know, a trillion terabytes. So uh, even on the e-business suite side, you know, typically we, we, we used to see you know, probably in the tens of terabytes uh, would be a kind of a typical e-business suite customer. And now we're seeing customers that have already exceeded 100 terabytes. Uh, and a few that are in the 150 plus uh, terabytes uh, that would have been unheard of, you know, of five, six years ago. Uh, so the, the fact that definitely not only the data is growing, but customers are retaining more of that data in order to do data insight, in order to do, you know, analysis uh, and pattern analysis, you need that multi-year of data uh, in order to do those types of scenarios. And the other interesting thing is that the real-time data percentage is also increasing over time. So again, typically with ERP, most of that data you, you know, used to be the back office, right? Orders would be fed in through EDI. Uh, even financial transactions typically would come in you know, in batch cycles, um, either you know, end of date uh, types of uh, cycles, uh, for example, not necessarily real time. Uh, now with all this uh, data ingestion and web services uh, and you know, real time transaction feeds that are happening, we see a tremendous increase of real-time data. Now that obviously you know, stresses the system even more because you, know, you can do a lot of optimizations when a you know, batch program runs and you, know, you pick up a million journals to be processed. That's different if you have a million journals coming throughout the day, you know, every minute there might be a thousand journals being posted all from different sources, different sessions, different threads uh, because of the various feeds, you know, including web services and things. So that of course changes the dynamics of how the data is being processed and also changes the dynamics of uh, how the data will be you know, queried and reported and, and analyzed on. Uh, the other trend that probably most of you are familiar with, if, especially if you're a you know, system administrator or a database administrator, uh, if you're not already on, you know, if your storage frame is not ready SSD or an all flash model, uh, you're probably in the process of, of uh, migrating uh, to such a storage frame. Uh, but you can see over time, you know, the, the migration to SSD type storage for enterprise uh, class systems uh, is increasing uh, and it will definitely continue to increase. And that itself, you know, introduced uh, good performance improvements uh, from the, you know, physical uh, conventional disk uh, model. Because typically with SSDs, you usually see, you know, sub milliseconds, maybe like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 milliseconds uh, on the average uh, with maybe some spikes of one to two milliseconds, uh, you know, under heavy load compared that to the old storage frames, which are you know, largely disk-based, uh, those would typically you know, have 10 to 15 milliseconds of latencies and under heavy load, maybe 20 to 25 you know, milliseconds. So you know, almost 10X uh, improvement uh, just in, in storage. Uh, and that's one of the reasons, for example, why Exadata was uh, you know, imp improved performance a lot initially is because of their you know, all flash solution. And not only just because of the flash storage, but obviously they, they went above and beyond by 
introducing optimizations uh, such as the cell cache and pushing filters down and, and things like that. But uh, in general, you, you know, storage is, is definitely moving towards a more low latency, you know, higher performance uh, because of the you know data set growths. So again, one of the reasons why you know in memory is really essential and critical is. Uh, as I mentioned, building these application level caches or data lakes or data warehouses, it's very expensive, uh, very time consuming, um, especially if you do it at the application level, because then you need, you know, of course, a set of separate set of APIs to do that. Uh, you need to handle things like cache and validation. When the data gets updated, you know, how often do you refresh? Uh, is it a rolling refresh? Is it, you know, uh, a, a cluster refresh where all the nodes are synced at the same time? Uh, then you have, you know, data consistency issues. Uh, and even if you do refresh the data, you know, every so often, what is the staleness factor? Uh, and, you know, business users uh, don't obviously want to see, you know, stale data, especially when they're doing, you know, real-time data analysis. So there's a lot of these integration uh, challenges and complexities by trying to build, you know, a performance solution uh, without having some kind of, you know, in-memory uh, implementation. Uh, and then, of course, there's all the issues of data security, especially with an e-business suite. We already have a lot of native security that's integrated tightly with the database uh, in terms of the responsibility security, operating unit uh, security, you know, which ledgers can you see, things like that. So uh, by extracting that data into a data lake, uh, you either have to replicate or build that security versus using database in memory uh, for which the security is up, you know, uh, enforced at the database level. So uh, real quick in terms of the you know, uh, database and memory processing. It's built, of course, on the, you know, SIMD vector processing. Um, so SIMD has been around a while um, and, you know, was in originally, uh, you know, used in the 90s, you know, for vector processing graphics, for example, uh, gaming, even, you know, math computations, for example. The basic concept is that instead of doing a single instruction, you know, sort of in a loop, uh, iterating through, you essentially do a single instruction and, and operate on multiple data sets uh, or cells at the same time. So it becomes you know, more efficient, similar to what we would typically, you know, bulk processing instead of you know, inserting a thousand records in a loop, uh, which would of course have its you know, own latency and be very inefficient. You can do a single bulk insert, uh, which will then you know, insert all those thousand records in one shot. Uh, and that's usually you know, orders of magnitude faster than you know, inserting in a loop, similar uh, type of concept. So database and memory, again, the, one of the key advantages of this feature is not only obviously the, the great performance that it delivers, but more importantly, that it doesn't require the developer to really you know, change their code or write a specific set of you know, application APIs uh, to handle in-memory processing. You, you just continue to execute SQL statements like you normally would uh, in any case. Uh, and then the you know, database uh, takes control and it figures out that those objects are in the in-memory store and scans the in-memory store accordingly, returning the results from that SQL, uh, you know, automatically. And in 21C, uh, a new mode, uh, the high mode was introduced uh, where, uh, again, the auto in-memory is, is gonna be really a fantastic feature because that will then, the database will automatically determine which objects can be moved into the in-memory store. Since of course the database already knows which objects are hot, it knows which objects are cold, uh, it knows, of course, what SQL statements are being executed and things like that. So it would obviously have the, the best uh, information to be able to determine which objects should be moved into the memory store. And that avoids, you know, having to do manual setup saying, okay, put these tables in the you know, memory store uh, and tune it individually. Uh, that automatic automation uh, will be really a fantastic uh, addition uh, to the feature. Um, and there's also, of course, the ability to, to process uh, JSON documents as well. Um, so, you know, those of you who are uh, familiar with like for using web services, most of the web service, you know, data exchange these days is, is JSON. Uh, and so being able to, you know, ingest those data streams and be able to, you know, go through those data sets, uh, just like they were, you know, normal rows and columns that you're typically used to, uh, can also benefit from, you know, in-memory processing as well. Um, and then also a new feature in 21C, which is the hybrid scans, again, which is also really useful for, for apps. Um, is that, for example, if you had, say, you know, 10 columns in the in-memory store and you happen to reference the 11th column, which wasn't uh, prior to 21C, uh, the entire query would be satisfied from the buffer cache since, since a subset of that was not available. Now in 21C, it can basically use, you know, source columns one through 10 
from the in-memory store and then source, you know, the 11th column from the buffer cache and do essentially a hybrid scan. So uh, again, these are all new features to really make the use of in-memory, you know, more automatic um, and to be able to leverage the, you know, performance gains without having to do a lot of manual effort, uh, unlike other uh, solutions. Uh, external tables can also leverage in-memory as well. So for example, if you, you know, want to ingest data, say from a Kafka stream, for example, or even a Hadoop data source, or even just, you know, raw data, uh, that's, you know, maybe CSV file or something like that, that can also benefit from the in-memory store as well. So the other key benefits uh, is the, you know, leveraging the native database security. As I said, you know, if you, you really try to build uh, out, you know, a separate, you know, data lake or a data store, uh, just for the purposes of optimizing performance, which, you know, had to be done essentially prior to this, you know, feature, um, then, you know, you pretty much have to implement your own, you know, data security. And, and obviously that'll be not, not going to be as robust uh, as the database uh, security as well. So, and with all the cyber attacks these days, that's really an, an, an important issue uh, to take into consideration. Um, and the other thing is that the, the in-memory feature allows the, you know, application to be able to leverage that feature and execute a lot of the complex searches uh, and analytical uh, queries uh, that would normally require lots of, you know, hand tuning, hand massaging, uh, probably separate indexing and a separate set of uh, roll up tables uh, to be able to deliver good performance. Um, and the other nice thing is that since it's obviously a native database feature, uh, this really scales nice uh, in a rack environment uh, by allowing you to scale out the cluster and add nodes. Uh, and typically in, you know, in, in e-business suite environments and large scale e-business suite environments, we typically have uh, a rack cluster involved and there's typically, you know, a node or two or three that are dedicated using application affinity through rack services uh, dedicated to kind of reporting activities uh, in order to, you know, improve performance and also keep that type of activity on, on these uh, primary nodes, uh, as opposed to interfering with, you know, the users that might be entering transactions or running batch programs uh, on the other nodes. So I'm going to cover some application use cases uh, that we have uh, implemented and, and have seen really uh, you know, good results with. Um, so order management, um, a couple of the areas uh, is one in pick release. So pick release is the job responsible in order management for essentially finding out which uh, order lines are ready to be picked, packed, uh, and shipped. Um, so that you would basically generate the you know, picking labels, uh, pack the items, you know, get them ready and get them on the conveyor belt and get those boxes on the truck ready to be delivered, you know, to the customer. Um, and uh, pick release and as well as interface trip stop, uh, they have one of those performance challenges that there isn't really uh, good selective filters on that because essentially needs to scan all the open, you know, documents, uh, whether it's open shipments or open order lines uh, in order to find which candidate lines are shipped. For example, um, typically in a large environment, you will typically have you know uh, over a million open lines uh, if it's a large scale environment. So just scanning through you know a million lines itself will take you know minutes, um, uh, if not even maybe you know half an hour to an hour on a very busy system. And in addition to that, it has to apply you know additional filters to see if those lines are on hold, for example, uh, if there's you know, on hand quantity to satisfy that uh, order, et cetera. So there's a lot of additional checks that need, be, need to be done. Uh, and this makes them really great candidates for in-memory because that's exactly the requirement here is to scan through a large number of records, uh, but really produce a small number of rows due to all the application of all the you know, additional uh, filters. Uh, and those filters are you know, often involve different tables, which makes it a challenge to be able to, you know, even if you create a lot of secondary indexes, it's still not going to be able to deliver the kind of performance that, that in-memory will. Um, and order searches uh, as well as another a key area for whether you're using the order organizer or even the sales order form, you know, search functionality. Typically, a lot of users, they search by different customer filters. Uh, they search by, you know, customer name. They search by order dates. Um, they search by orders that are assigned to them, uh, for example, or in their queue, uh, many, of, many of which scenarios are not really indexed. Um, and so that leads to having to create at least, you know, 10, 15 additional indexes, typically on order lines or order headers in order to satisfy those queries. So all those secondary indexes can be dropped, which means that not only your storage footprint, you know, is improved, but more importantly, you don't have to maintain the uh, cost uh, 
uh, and incur the DML overhead of all those extra indexes only to satisfy those you know, searches. So as an example here, we're showing that you know, putting the order lines table uh, in, in memory, you just execute this alter table order lines in memory and give priority critical. Um, and then you, know, you can query the in memory views uh, to see basically the size of that segment and then what's the size of it in the in memory store. So here you can see, for example, the order lines table is 35 gigabyte in size um, and uh, four gigabytes uh, in the in memory store. Uh, and this is an example of the query. So this is the actual pick release query that the job will run. Um, of course, it you know joins a lot of tables, and the SQL text itself is you know longer that, that can fit on a slide. But the the key takeaway here is that you can see that in the explain plan, you see the table access in memory full uh, of order lines, um, and you know instead of having to create all these secondary indexes uh, by just doing a full scan uh, of order lines. And the optimizer is assuming it's going to take estimating it's taking about two seconds uh, for that scan, um, which is pretty close to accurate. So normally, if, if any of you have worked in eBusiness Suite, if you do a full table scan and OE order lines, all oh, it, it you know doing that in two to three seconds is amazing. You usually never see anything like that. It's more like uh, twenty minutes, uh, sometimes even hours, uh, depending if it's a busy system and there's a lot of undo being applied, for example. So these are some of the you know performance uh, before and after uh, implementing uh, database in memory. As you can see, you know consistent with our expectation, it's orders of magnitude faster. Um, you can see the open order search uh, went down from you know over five minutes to five seconds, uh, and the pick release query itself went from almost two minutes down to three seconds. Uh, and the interface trip stop, which is ITS, went down from almost you know eighty seconds down to four seconds. So you know significant uh, improvement. And on the credit summary, so credit summary is one of the key jobs that uh, customers typically configure uh, whenever you're booking orders. Uh, it typically does a credit exposure check uh, to make sure that the you know, customer can pay for the order. Uh, and for example, if there's any holds uh, or if they exceeded their you know, credit amount, for example, so those checks have to be done. Uh, and there's usually a summary table that's popular. In fact, that summary table um, is, uh, was created just because the query to find out the open exposure uh, was expensive. Uh, and so a summary table was created. Now within memory, we don't really even need that uh, credit summary table anymore. We could just run the query itself um, and then you know, materialize that result. So you can see the credit summary refresh itself is you know, came down from 700 plus seconds down to 37 seconds, which is a huge improvement um, and can also allow the you know, program to run more often. So it typically runs every you know, 10, 15, minutes uh, at a customer site uh, it's scheduled to run meaning every 10 to 15 minutes now you can pretty much run it every minute or two uh, which is good because then you make sure you don't overcommit uh, to the customer on the value chain uh, planning uh, product um, there's also uh, you know various uh, areas where in memory helped a lot so the the first one is collections so collections is the process of so what planning essentially does is planning is the engine that essentially does the you know the demand planning, um, and so what it does is essentially collects all the data from your source uh, ERP system. So it collects, for example, all your orders, which is your demand. It collects your supply information. It collects your on-hand information, you know, your inventory, etc., um, and collects all that data and then runs the you know in-memory planner against that to generate recommendations for your optimizing your you know supply chain. Uh, planning and optimizing your, you know, plant uh, activities, for example, um, and so collections is is literally, you know, executing queries against uh, tables that will almost always do full table scans because you know they're typically doing complete refreshes and they're typically fetching you know millions of records uh, of data, um, and so it's a uh, again another ideal candidate uh, for in memory. So these are just some of the tables uh, that typically would be great candidates for in memory. Uh, MSC system items is the one that stores all the items uh, that are being, you know, uh, planned. Um, and MSC bomb component stores all the, the bill of materials components for those items. And then routing operations is the uh, bomb routing uh, for those bombs as well. Um, so uh, again, you just issue the alter table uh, command and then place them, you know, in the in-memory store, and then just make sure your, you know, in-memory store is sized accordingly based on the size of these uh, tables. So looking at the uh, in-memory planner step, 
Uh, one of the things that it does, of course, is before it starts the in-memory piece, uh, where it actually does the you know forecasting and generates the model, uh, it has to load all this data uh, from the database uh, into in-memory. Uh, and you can see, again, I've highlighted here the trace uh, entries that are relevant. So you can see, for example, MSC bomb components, um, you know, it, it took basically about 1.8 seconds uh, to read, you know, over 4.2 million records, uh, again, which is amazing. Normally, something like this would probably take probably 10, 15 minutes uh, at best case. Uh, and MSC routing operations as well, another example there where it took, you know, two seconds to read 16.7 million records. So, um, you know, significant performance uh, improvements. And literally, without having to change anything, all we had to do is issue alter table commands, size the in-memory store, you know, correctly, and the execution plan automatically switch them, you know, to in-memory. So you you get the performance benefit without having to, you know, change the application or make code changes. Uh, Demontra is also another uh, kind of extension or maybe a supplemental product to uh, planning, uh, and what it does is it basically. It tries to do demand forecasting uh, planning. So uh, it tries to forecast essentially what your, uh, you know, which items, for example, you should be planning for uh, and what your order forecast, you know, will look like uh, over time, for example, so that you can plan uh, accordingly. So within Demantra, there's a couple of, you know, key jobs uh, that are relevant. Uh, one, of course, is the forecast job itself, which again, you know, uh, scans and crunches through a uh, tremendous amount of data. Uh, and there's also the front end worksheets. So the mantra has uh, the front end UI tool, which is called the collaborator. That's where you actually view the planners themselves would view the plan. Um, and they would typically, you know, view the plan that's assigned to their planner. Um, and then you can basically drill down into the individual cells uh, for your specific item or specific supplier or whatever the scenario is. Uh, and then there's also safety stock and sales history, uh, which are also another additional jobs that the uh, mantra runs, uh, which can also benefit. So in Demantra, pretty much it really comes down to two main tables uh, that power the application. Uh, sales data is basically the, the cube that kind of materializes all your items uh, and your, uh, uh, your buckets, essentially. Uh, and your buckets can be either you know, monthly buckets or weekly buckets, depending on your you know, forecast cycle. Um, and then MDP matrix is the one that has the you know, item master and location entries. Uh, and then sales data is the intersection entity uh, of those. So typically the way Demantra worksheet, uh, the collaborator, the UI performance works is when the planner logs in, uh, it essentially uh, you know, prompts them for which range of data they want to look at. So if they want to look at, for example, you know, this month's data compared to previous months, or if they want to look at a whole year's worth of forecast data, uh, Demantra creates a temporary tables. Um, um, you can see that T, T underscore date underscore one, five, two, four, nine. So it generates a temporary table um, you know, uh, actually creates a permanent table uh, of type uh, temporary, populates that table uh, with the date ranges that the user selected in the UI, uh, and then executes this query uh, to join to MDP matrix and sales data to be able to fetch this data. Um, and so here you can, you can see that they're essentially comparing, you know, the month of March uh, for one year with the month of April for another year. So, you know, doing that forecast comparison. Um, and typically these queries, uh, again, this is another great use case for in memory because it's really, uh, you know, having to churn through a lot of data, uh, literally tens of millions of records, if not more. Uh, and because of the group by, it'll reduce those, you know, tens of millions of records down to uh, probably a few thousand or a few hundred records. Um, so again, a, a great candidate for, and, and nothing you could really do with indexing because the indexing is gonna be applied at the filter level so you would still have to scan through tens of millions of records. Uh, it's really the group by that's you know doing that uh, reduction plus all those other composite filters. Um, and so normally these queries would you know take in best case with all sorts of tuning and things, um, you know one to two minutes uh, typically, um, which is why a lot of times opening the worksheets are are expensive in the mantra. Uh, but with in memory, you know these come down to a few seconds. So as an example here, uh, if you open the collaborator and you look at it from a planner view, uh, that, that query came down from three minutes you know, down to four seconds. Uh, and then if you drill down into a specific cell, for example, you're interested in a specific product, uh, for example, um, then that came down from a minute to you know, two seconds. So 
you know, significant uh, improvement, uh, which is what we would expect of, uh, of a feature uh, of this magnitude. So real quick uh, summary, again, really, in my opinion, it, the database and memory is really a game changer uh, because again, the, the key value is that you don't have to really go to great lengths um, to engineer um, you know, a, a data set or a data store and do all kind of extreme uh, you know, combination of indexing or you know, summarize tables or materialize views or whatever the case may be in order to deliver you know, good performance. And that essentially is being done natively for you by the feature itself without you having to change a single line of code. That's, that's why I classify it as a game changer because you don't really have to spend a lot of time engineering a, a very intricate solution in order to be able to deliver that. Prior to this feature, you had to do that. You had to actually spend a great amount of time of building out these you know, data lakes or data stores, or, or sometimes they're called them reporting instances, for example. Uh, and you would have to really you know, go to great lengths to be able to deliver these types of you know, so seconds uh, response times churning through tens of millions or hundreds of millions of records. Um, so it's, it's truly a game changer. Um, and it, it allows the applications to really just leverage the feature transparently uh, with really minimal configuration uh, and minimal uh, intervention. And in 21C, it'll become even you know, much easier uh, by having that auto mode where the database will automatically start putting objects in the in-memory store uh, as opposed to you, you know, having to explicitly do that. And really what we, what we found in our personal experience is it really just comes down to uh, tuning how much memory you, know, you can throw out the in-memory store. So the larger, obviously, the, the better. Um, and then you wanna make sure that the objects that you're putting in there are, you know, make sense uh, given the types of filters and given the types of SQLs that are being uh, executed. Um, and then the key is to you know, make sure you just review your execution plans, make sure you're seeing those you know, in-memory access methods um, and make sure you're seeing the type of you know, performance SLAs that you expected. So just some uh, references here uh, in terms of the you know, database and memory feature itself, uh, the blog, and then also I included some um, uh, support notes here uh, with respect to eBusiness Suite, uh, one for just using database and memory in general with eBusiness Suite, and then one for Demontra and one for uh, planning as well. So thank you very much for, uh, for your time. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take those. Yeah, th thank you, Ahmad. That was very uh, insightful. And uh, uh, I think we hear that in almost every presentation about database in memory being a game changer. And uh, also you don't need any application changes. So yeah, definitely uh, very easy to get started. Uh, thank you, Ahmad. Um, I, I don't think there are any open question as of now. So we can get to the next presentation. Um, so the next presentation is uh, Hisense Database in Memory Case Studies uh, by uh, Yu Shao, and he's supported by Jun Soon as well. So Yu Shao is a principal solution engineer at Oracle China and focuses on in-memory computing technology, including database in-memory and time stand. Um, in this session, he will share two stories about uh, applying database in-memory technology in their cores, uh, SAP ERP systems on traditional server and exadata engineering system. Uh, they are able to get their performance without involving ERP consultants and um, modifying any application. So the same theme as what we heard in the previous presentation. Um, Yusha, uh, please uh, uh, take the stage. Uh, let me see. Yeah, go ahead. You already shared it. So go ahead. Get started. You're on mute. Yeah. Hi, Aranya. Can, we, can I begin? Yes, go ahead, please. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good morning. It's great to be here with you today. Let me briefly introduce myself. And I'm from the Oracle China AC team. Thanks to our customer, Hisense. Thanks to Chu Dong from Hisense Infrastructure Department to provide the database in memory use case. For an angry reason, in the next 30 minutes, I will be on behalf of the customer Hisense to share the database in memory case study. This presentation is divided into three parts. I want to begin with a brief introduction of Hisense. Next, we will 
talking about two use cases of database in memory. They are on different hardware. One is an additional server and the other is on a data. And finally, I will land on how we use database in memory. Okay, let's move on to the first part about hazards. Hisense was founded as a radio manufacturer in 1969. Everyone should have heard of Qingdao Beer. Our headquarters is also in, located in Qingdao too, in Shandong province. Shandong is also the hometown of Confucius. He has a famous quote, isn't it also great? When friends visit from distant place. So if you have the opportunity to, to come to Qingdao, welcome to visit Hisense. After more than 50 years of development, we now have three groups. They are Home Appliance Group, Electronic Information Group, Intelligent Technology Group. Today, Hisense is the number one TV brand in China and South Africa. We have built 54 overseas companies and utilized 16 high-end international production facilities in Europe, Central America, and South Africa. Hisense also has 16 research and development centers worldwide with the sole aim to de delivering first rate and affordable products that improve the lives of consumers. Let's take a look at our first use case, database in memory and traditional servers. For simplicity, we name it Project H. Project Edge is responsible for all our domestic business and we use SAP's ERP system. With the development of business, our system faced the following problems. First, the amount of data is growing rapidly and the backup time is getting longer and longer. Second, the resource contention is serious and the program runs slowly, especially during the month end period. Third, our database 11 just lifetime support is far too Expire. We decided to improve the existing system after testing and evaluation. We set our goals at number one, overall performance increased by 25%. The average performance improvement of the top 20 programs and the monthly closing is greater than 50%. The two major principles are, number one, leverage existing hardware because the current server is relatively powerful. There are still a lot of available memory and CPU resource. Number two, do not change the version of the SAP ERP. We want to increase the performance by only introduce database in memory feature. The main technical approach, approaches we use are, Adopt database in memory and upgrade the existing high availability architecture to a disaster recovery architecture. This is a comparison of our architecture before and after the upgrade. We did not change the version of the SAP ERP and at the same time uploaded the backup to the secondary site. We upgraded the database to 18C because the database latency had not been certified with SAP at that time. Let's first look at the overall improvement. We sampled a total of six, uh, 886 programs. The average database response time was 1.47 times faster. And the average program response time, I mean the end-to-end -end response time was 1.35 times faster. Since these programs run so many times each month, on average, more than 8,000 hours can be saved each month. On average, more, we have seen some programs with degraded performance. These are mainly OATP requests. 
since each runtime is a few milliseconds, the overall impact can be glowed. Let's take a look at the top 20 programs to sort by elapsed, elapsed times. The average database response time is 1.89 times faster. The average response time of the program is 1.45 times faster. Multiply that by the number of calls, it saves, an, it saves nearly 5,000 hours per month. Next, let's take a look at the month end processing. The whole month end processing consists of many query sets. We selected two subsidiaries with production operations and sampled the five most time consuming query. Most of the query sets are faster. We also noticed for subsidiary B, two steps are slightly slower. That's so because the after months have more business to process. Anyway, the overall process, which includes these five query sets, has been 3.2 and 1.6 times faster, respectively. Mm -hmm. On the whole, Project H has achieved the goals originally set especially through database in memory. The performance of month end processing and the daily operations has been greatly improved. Next, look at our second use case, database in memory on app data. Just like project H, we also give it a code, project ACE. Project ACE also uses SAP ERP system and is responsible for Hisense overseas business. With the growing business in overseas markets, the amount of data has grown rapidly and the processing is more complicated. Like Project H, the program also has performance issues. After testing and evaluation, we established the following project goals. They including performance improvements, consolidate more application systems, and enhancing the business continuity. We select AppData to replace the old Sun server because we heard of AppData is the best platform to host a Oracle database. And it can also enhance our system performance and availability. We want to have a try and prove it. We also plan to upgrade the database from 11G to Lightning C and enable database in memory feature. The entire migration process lasted for five months. Most of the time was spent on updated migration testing and database in memory performance testing. We sampled 1252 out of 1562 front end programs. The performance has been improved significantly and the execution time has been greatly reduced. You can see the months of the upgrade has 16% more number of executions, but the total execution time decreased by 54%. Calculated based on 
two thousand hours per person per year. About forty eight people can be saved each year. Using SAP's monitoring tools, you can see from the global work process overview that the number of active instances is greatly reduced, which also indicates that the processing speed of the system is faster than before. To understand where the database in memory has improved the experience of end users, we distributed questionnaires to 57 departments with an average score of 8.3. The statistics include, include four aspects. They are customized transaction, SAP standard report, SAP customized report, and monthly closing. More than 80% of the users agree that there is a significant improvement and the users' work efficiency has increased by more than 50%. I can read some feedback now, here now. This report, just uh, for example, from Australia branch. This report has been much faster than before, but I just hope it can be faster. They used to take at least two hours. Now it's about 20 minutes. Now the speed export. export has been greatly improved. Thank you very much. And another feedback from the product planning department. The improvement is obvious and my work efficiency has increased by at least 50%. Summarizing project A's. We achieved all the expected goals with database in memory and app data. We get the best of both worlds. Performance and availability have been greatly improved. Well, we now come to the last part. Let's go into some details. How we use database in memory. As you can see, database in memory has a lot of features. In current stage, we only use the most fundamental features, which are also the most core and important, just like a pure in memory column format, just like in memory joins, in memory ag aggregations, CMD vector processing, and data planning via storage index. They, they, they are all automatic. We still have a lot of features to explore and leverage. The first tool we use is in-memory advisor. In-memory advisor is a small tool in database tuning pack. It can if mm -hmm. analytics processing from other database activity and estimates the in-memory size and the performance improvement factors. You can use this tool in the evaluation phase. For Hisense, we mainly use this tool to determine the appropriate appropriate eight database objects that need to be placed in in-memory column store. In-memory advisor made a roof estimate of the overall memory requirements. Oracle provides another tool, compression advisor, which can more accurately estimate the memory usage of database objects in the in-memory column store. The actual compression effects are listed here. We compressed 1.5 TB on disk data into 133 GB RAM. 
the overall compression ratio is near 12. It can be seen that the compression efficiency is very impressive. For example, the largest table has a compression ratio of more than 15, and the highest compression ratio is 41 times. Actually, there are six compression errors for database in memory. There are no compression for DML. Query low, query high. Capacity low and capacity high. The principle is very simple. Just use the default query law. It's the best for query performance and also with the relative good compression efficiency. We did a total of two rounds of performance optimization. The first round is very simple. Just put the table into your memory mm -hmm. console by all the table DDL statements. So the performance problems are solved in this round. The remaining few performance problems are solved by creating index, forcing a full tape scan, and locking down the optimal execution plan, and so on. Database in memory on the rack environment requires special consideration. There are two deployment options. The first is to distribute, distribute data on different instances because in memory data will not be shipping through the interconnection. So parallel execution needs to be enabled. We choose another method, which means that all objects will need to be fully populated on the instance where the application connection is made. You can achieve this by using in-memory distribute for service class. Then the database objects will follow the active service. Mm -hmm. In project S, because app data support the duplication of in-memory data, therefore there is a complete column data copy on each instance. Compared with the first project, Project H, we also have good performance. But further, we have better business continuity and save the time of repopulation. Some people may ask if there is only act data or only database in memory. What will be the final effect and what are their respective contribution? In Project H, we achieved our performance goals using only database in memory. But the performance does not represent all. You can also see from here that there are many database in memory features unique to act data, just like in memory duplication, just like automatic in memory. Simply put, database in memory is a feature, a database option, and our data is a platform. Our data is the best platform for deploying database in memory. Database in memory features we might be interested in in the future include fast start and cell memory. Fast start is very useful for project H because it can speed up the data population during for over. When the amount of data is very large, the second feature, cell memory, is very useful because the data can be published to a large capacity activated flash disk. And because of the shared architecture, there is no data repopulation. If the performance can meet our expectations, this will be a good option.
for Hisense, in memory, the benefits of database in memory include four points. It's application transparent. It's fully compatible with our SAP application. No modification needed. It's easy to use. We just add some RAM and put tables into it, and it works. In Oracle, in Oracle database 21C, you don't even need to set the in-memory property. Oracle will automatically populate the database objects according to real-time statistics, statistics. And it supports the general architecture for the mainstream hardware, like x x and operating system, like Linux. So for the mixed uh, analytic and the transactional workloads like SAP. And the total cost of, of ownership is low. We only upgrade your database to get the database option. And it's easy to configure with less maintenance. If there is only one advantage of database in memory, we can say we think it is the simplicity. We do not need to involve ERP consultants. We do not need to modify the application. Since the physics structure of the database objects has not been changed, everything is transparent to the application. Perhaps the internal mechanism or algorithm of database in memory is very complicated, but for users, most of the time, just enable it is enough. It's just like saying, I don't know how to build a car, but I can drive one. Okay, that's all. That's the two stories about Hisense database memory use case. And this concludes mm -hmm. my presentation. Thanks, you. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Yusha. Um, yeah, those two are very uh, kind of great stories um, covering both database in memory on traditional servers as well as Exadata servers. So yeah, uh, thank you for going through and explaining the whole process. So yeah, th that was great. Uh, there is one question, Yusha, maybe you can try to answer this question. Uh, we can also try to answer. So uh, the question is, uh, first of all, thank you for sharing very valuable information. Did you evaluate SAP in memory solutions? What value does Oracle DBIM have come have over uh, SAP in memory solution? Okay. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, actually, I don't know the. Uh, I should verify okay. this with the customer because because. Uh, at this stage, the customer don't have the uh, don't have the HANA don't have adopt HANA. Their their SAP system is based on our database. Yeah, sure. So a couple of things that we know, uh, Koshiro, uh, you asked the question. Uh, one is that it, uh, the HANA requires that you put all the data in, in memory, okay? Whereas database in memory does not require you to do that. You can select uh, some tables or partitions or, or uh, materialized views and all, or even columns, and then you can put it in memory. So that, that's a major difference, okay? Um, the other one is that uh, the SAP HANA will also require application changes, right? And that will require translation of the programs and other things. So um, I, I think that's another big benefit of database in memory as you kind of heard from every presentation is that you don't require any application changes. Um, anybody else wants to add anything? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Ranjan, since actually I've, I've been with a number of customers that evaluate in memory along with HANA. The main advantage in memory has, it's an in-place transparent thing to add to an existing database application without having to bring in a whole new database. So years ago, we worked with uh, AT&T Wireless, for instance, an example. And for them, the big issue was having to train a separate team and deploy HANA, adding another copy of the data, having to handle ETL from 
you know, the source database to the HANA database. It's just that, you know, I, I'm not trying to say the HANA is a bad product here, but I'm just saying that adding another product to the mix just complicates your architecture. As I said, at least in my talks, I don't know if anyone here was, uh, anyone saw uh, my presentation. The minute you add a second different database to your architecture, it basically, you know, nearly quadruples your complexity. And I think that's the main advantage of in-memory. And just to add to what Tankar said, you know, there was a similar question in the question answer. It was asked by Sidul Hassan. And what I've done is that I have uploaded a database in my Oracle database in memory versus HANA comparison document. Please take a look at it. It has a detailed comparison and it, it could be used as a reference. Yeah. So, and also, uh, uh, Shalendra, just to add to it, uh, kind of, we have a benchmark result as well, right? It's a yeah. published report as well, which shows uh, the performance difference between SAP HANA and, and our yeah. um, database in memory. Take a look at those documents. So, yeah, these documents outline very clearly the differences and the value proposition for the database. In memory. Yeah, yeah. Um, any other question anybody has? Um, otherwise, you shall a great presentation again. Uh, thank you so much. Um, thank you. Let's see if uh, people have other questions. Pandeep, would you mind asking a question on Q&A? Uh, it'll be better if you just put it there. I just saw your question on the chat. Please put it on the Q on Q&A. So meanwhile, um, I would like to thank all the speakers here um, and a great presentation throughout the summit. A lot of uh, great discussions with the attendees. So thank you all the speaker, all the attendees. Um, and uh, here, and again, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, this summit is just the beginning of collaboration. We are very excited about all these interaction, discussions, connections that we built. Uh, also, if you, if you, uh, please connect us on the LinkedIn group and uh, let's, the, uh, let's stay connected there and work together, uh, have the discussions going, share your use case, uh, share any, um, anything you would like to uh, share uh, regarding your experience or, or, or your journey with database in memory. We, all, we are all eyes and ears to whatever you want to share. Uh, we are in this exciting journey with you. So yeah, we are here to help. Let us know. You have all the PM contacts, so let us know. Yeah, and uh, all, all at the end of it, I would like to add is that if you want to start a POC with Oracle Database in memory, and you know, uh, to get started, I mean, even if you don't need any help, if you could let us know, and uh, so that you can solicit help at the drop of hat, right? And we know that you're basically trying out a POC. We, we, we are very eager to help in your journey and to make sure that the journey ends in a success. I mean, that's, that's, that's an offer we would like to basically um, put to all of you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Tirtankar, you have any uh, last minute message for the attendees? I mean, I, I just wanted to say, it's a real pleasure to see the technology we build used in the real world. I mean, that's, it's always humbling to see how complex these actual use cases are. Because when we design these features, of course, we expect adoption, but we, it's always impressive how the adoption is typically in a scale that was beyond our imagination. So both, both Ahmed and, um, and uh, Mr. Shah talked about this, their use cases. It's impressive to see how, you know, these mm -hmm. real world benefits in extremely complex applications. So uh, I just, you know, I feel very humbled and very proud that the technology we build is used in these um, very, very important use cases. Thank you. Thank you to the speakers. Yes. So let me pause the recording here.